Hello class, my name is Ryan. Today we're going to be talking about theory of mind. Uh, we're going to go over what theory of mind is, its history, and uh, the real world applications of theory of mind. Uh, I'd like to start off with the actual definition of theory of mind, which refers to the ability of an individual to make inferences about what others may be thinking or feeling and to predict what they may do in a given situation based on these inferences. Wow, what a mouthful that is, huh? Um, I kind of want to shorten that up for you guys a little bit and make it simpler. Uh, I've written it down here for you. Theory of mind is the concept of understanding another's intentions, beliefs, or thoughts. This idea or concept was um, created by uh, two people doing research named Premack and Woodruff in 1978. They were studying um, chimpanzees, and they had a chimpanzee they called Sarah. Sarah was to watch videos of humans stuck in a situation that they were responsible for fi finding a solution. One of the examples is the human was inside of a cage, and they had to find their way out of the cage. And uh, Sarah would watch videos of this human trying to find the solution. Right before the solution was found, they would stop the video. Then Sarah was given two different pictures, one that was correct and one that was wrong with finding the solution. Sarah was to choose the correct photograph that illustrated the human finding the solution. More often than not, Sarah actually chose the correct photo, which shows that Sarah the chimp was uh, demonstrating theory of mind. She had the ability to understand the intentions and the thoughts of others, such as that human that was trying to find the solution. Her thought was to get out, to find the solution, to get out of the cage. Um, after Woodruff and Premax study, um, there have been numerous studies that have been done since then. Um, one in particular in 1983, done by Ferner and Wimmer, um, they began something known as the acid test. Um, we now call it the false leaf task, and basically um, it shows whether a subject has theory of mind, and I'm going to give a little demonstration for you guys today on how this works. Um, so we have a bottle of water, and we're going to call a character named Jimmy. Um, this is Jimmy's bottle of water, and Jimmy wants to hide the water because he has to leave the room. So he's going to hide it down here under this table. Jimmy leaves the room, he's going to the bathroom. So we as a class are going to move this bottle of water into a different location. We're going to hide it over here behind the podium so that Jimmy doesn't know where it is. Now, if you would ask the subject of this experiment, the child, um, where is Jimmy going to look for that bottle of water when he comes in? If the child responds that, the, that Jimmy's going to look under the table where Jimmy placed it, they're showing that they have theory of mind. If the child responds that Jimmy's going to look over at the podium, they're not demonstrating theory of mind. They're not showing the understanding that Jimmy's thoughts remembers putting it there. That's where Jimmy put it. That's what Jimmy understands. So. That is the false belief test. It makes uh, the child demonstrate whether they understand a false belief. Jimmy has a false belief that the water bottle is there, but the bottle is not actually there. So that's the false belief test. Any questions, class? No? Okay. We're going to move on into the real world application of theory of mind. The first thing I'd like to mention is that um, theory of mind is believed to have some relevance to autism in the fact that an individual who has autism uh, may not demonstrate theory of mind by having the ability to understand another's intentions, beliefs, or thoughts. Um, it's not something that has been proven, but it is something that they continue to research. Um, and even more research is being done on the understanding of when theory of mind actually develops and a lot of the research um, is showing that theory of mind has to do with the onset of language. The earlier an individual develops language, the earlier they develop theory of mind. Um, 
Again, we don't have 100% concrete proof on this, but it is something that we continue to research and hopefully one day we will come up with uh, a better understanding and more of a concrete definition of what theory of mind actually is um, and that we can research it even further from there. Uh, any questions about theory of mind? No? All right, class, have a good day.